I feel like I should start by clarifying something. I'm probably not gonna really give any specific attention to Lumity in the series. I just don't think there's anything to say about it that hasn't been said already. It's easily the most talked about thing in the show, and my whole point of making this series is to look at stuff that I don't think is talked about enough. However, I will still talk about how Lumini affects the characters and story. Anyways, with that disclaimer out of the way, let's begin. We open on an average night for the Blights, in which they're selling security products that can easily be disabled by an angsty 14 year old. Which, you could argue means that it's not good security, and you would be right, because it isn't. But instead of solving that issue, Adalia decides her daughter has too many friends for her own comfort. I mean, you can almost count them all on one hand, that's just too much. So she does what any reasonable person would do in her situation, and she arranges her friends to be executed. <clears throat> I mean expelled. And in a shocking twist, the Hexide gang doesn't take this great. Desperate to change Bump's minds, they attempt bribery, identity theft, and even trespassing. Despite their brilliant plans, however, they are unsuccessful. Gus and Willow are kidnapped by birds for being failures, and Amity decides to go outside for no reason other than for proposal baiting. Side tangent here, but Amity, what are you doing? She legit teleports outside just to drop her stuff, then the bell rings, and she's like, oh shit, I gotta go. Like, why were you outside? You went back in, like, one minute later. Anyways, Luz goes to talk to the Blights about the car's extended warranty, and by that, I mean she basically gets herself killed so that Willow and Gus get taught things besides amphibia lore. While this is all happening, Ida and Lilith are, in fact, in this episode. They learn how to properly combine glyphs to cast more spells. This revelation is made by Lilith, who trademarks the idea so hard that we never see it again. We do see them combine glyphs, but at least in my memory, this assembly of all of the four glyphs being connected isn't used again. Which is odd, because it seems like it would be useful to have. Especially if you're loose, who is getting eliminated by this bot right now. I have to say, my favorite part about Adalia letting the bot try to kill Luce here is that they never say that this is different from the intended presentation with Amity. Like, for all we know, Adalia was just gonna have her daughter killed that night. Sadly for her though, Amity decides to save Luce as her knight in a dark green cloak. Luce develops a crush, and then they are crushed. Also, I know it's the Boiling Isles, but the fact that everyone just cheers about two kids being fully eliminated is concerning. I still have no idea how Amity and Luce faked it, though, considering their bodies left a crater in the ground! After that, though, Luce gives out some participation awards, which makes Lilith a little too happy, and that's about how it ends. So, now that we have the summary out of the way, let's dive into the deeper meaning of the episode. Starting with our old pal, Luce. I'm gonna mention Luce's people-pleasing actions quite a lot in this series. I'm not gonna dive fully into it for this episode, as I already went more in-depth with it for last episode, but... I very well may explore it more in other episodes when she does it more. In this episode, she makes a deal with Odalia to let her friends back into school if she does the presentation. However, since it's the goddamn Boiling Isles, this presentation entails a lot of PAIN! Now in this case, she does still benefit from this slightly, as she's doing this to get herself into school as well. But even then, when she explains why she thinks she needs to do this, it's not because she thinks it's unfair to her or that she's upset that she got expelled. It's about Gus and Willow. How dare you mess with my friends' lives? Willow and Gus don't deserve this. And like Separate Tides, the solution she finds is somehow the most deadly option available. This isn't the most extreme action that she's done, however, so I won't go into it any further regarding this episode. Instead, let's talk about this episode's themes as standing up for yourself and being the best version of you. Amity has been going through a very well done arc since last season of self-improvement, but I don't need to tell you that. As far back as when she was a child, Amity has been wearing this necklace. She was even wearing it when she broke off her friendship with Willow, which marks the start of her mom's total control over her. The necklace is a physical reminder of Amity's lack of freedom, and the fact that this allows Odalia to say all those things to Amity without anyone else possibly hearing simply relieves any potential guilt Odalia may feel, if she even can feel such an emotion. It's like if instead of just yelling at you, your parents could psychologically scold you without any remorse. I could probably go on for a while about all the reasons Odalia is a shit parent, but I'm gonna let someone else do it for me. Take it away, Sandy! When we first see Amity's parents, Alador and Odalia Blight, they're at a Blight industry sale, which helps explain how they get so much of their wealth and are considered high status. First, I'm going to talk about Adolia, my least favorite of the parents and the most controlling. The first thing we're, we see in Adolia is her, she wants to make a good presentation 
of herself and her company and her family at the end of the show when amity makes it go bad because she does not want the abomaton stepping on her friend's picture because she cares about her friends she says amity you just lost us a lot of money which helps us identify that the first thing in her mind is money and status later on in the episode Adola is even willing to go so far as to cut Amity's friends off from her and making their lives more hard by expelling them from Hexide just to prove a point to Amity. This is similar to when the time Adolia and Alador made Amity not be friends with Willow by threatening Willow's future as a witch. Adolia cares about money and status so much she doesn't care if literal children get hurt or even die in the process like when loose was ready to fight the abomaton 2000 she said didn't you hear me it won't rest until its enemy is completely eliminated showing she doesn't care she only lets loose live because amity threatens to tear the abomaton 2000 pieces and make the show look bad she always says blight to hold the end of the deal but she was about to break that by not holding Amity's deal just because of spite. This also shows her selfishness and she really only cares about money and kind of herself. But now time for my favorite of the two parents, Alador Blight. Alador mostly just goes along with whatever Dolia says to do. The main thing I want to talk about is at the end of the episode where he doesn't want Luce to die to the Abomaton 2000 and later he makes Adalia keep her deal with Amity by saying Blight's always a hold in the deal and convincing her that Amity's getting stronger and can become a Covenhead one day. This shows that he actually has some kind of feelings towards his family and unlike Adalia, he is not selfish like her. And despite Alador's occasional efforts to help, Amity is ultimately the one who has to step up and stand her ground. She's the one to break the necklace, to break the thing that has helped her mom to control her. She's literally breaking free of her mother's grasp. After the years of abuse, she finally fights back. She's taking another step in her self-improvement. She's becoming her best self. Luz has caused a lot of things to change in Amity's life. And not just by turning her to the side of the gaze, but also by helping her. Luce is why she reconnected with Willow, why she bonded with her siblings, why she left her toxic friends, and she just encourages her to make the right decisions. Amity now has an actually good group of friends, and she's starting to improve her home life. We also see just how powerful she is, further showing how much better off she is now. Speaking of power, Ida is dealing with the reverse scenario, where she's trying to return to her best state. That being the state of having magic and power. She ignores Luz and Lilith's advice to be patient because she doesn't want to feel helpless. Up until King is in danger, she insists on figuring the glyphs out on her own to show Lilith that her way is superior. But once King is in danger, she asks for help. Amity took everything she learned from Luz and became her best self. And Ida is learning to listen to Luz's teachings in order to return to her best self. Luz also tries to help Gus and Willow be their best selves by getting them back in the Hexide. Basically, Luz is helpful. And that about concludes this video, folks. Thank you to Sandfrog for joining. If you would also like to join, I'm trying to include some members from the Discord server into these videos to show more people's thoughts. So if you have something you think isn't talked about enough regarding a specific episode, just join the Discord, link in the description, and DM me. Now to recommend some other videos y'all should watch if you haven't already. Toon Ruins made a video going into the symbolism of Ida's curse, which I would heavily recommend as well as a video discussing how Camila isn't a bad mom, which is nice because too many people are of that mindset. I just suggest checking out Rebecca Rose's whole channel. She makes great breakdowns and analysis videos, and there's simply too many good ones for me to list here. Chef Rose Productions has made some great videos about the Owl House, and Cartoon She has reviews for the whole show, including Season 2B. I'll leave links to all these videos in the description, as well as a playlist I found of a bunch of good video essays about the show, all of which I recommend you watch. That's all I have to say for now. I'll see you all next time during Echoes of the Past. Goodbye! <laughs>